Hello. G'day. It's so great to be with you, Pour It Out family. Today we bless you and we want you to know that God is trustworthy, that God is faithful, that he sees you, that he knows you and he's moving in your life. You know, he's the God of the great turnaround and we've got some great stories we want to share with you today about how he's taken even our worst defeats and turned them into some of our greatest victories and he wants to do that for you today. Are you ready? This is going to be a good one. Come on, pour it out. Hey, welcome to Pour It Out with Ben and Jody Hughes. We're so excited to have you with us today. We've got some wonderful stories that we want to share with you. This show is going to be all about Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. We want to let you know you can trust God. He has an amazing way of turning things around. Even when things look like they're in the worst situation they can be, He can turn them out and to make something absolutely yeah. amazing, beautiful than it ever could have been before. I really want to begin just by telling you just a little quick story. Well, it's actually not that little and it might even not be that quick, but I <laughs> want to tell you this story really quickly. You know, uh, I've shared before on the show how I didn't grow up in a Christian family. Um, I didn't grow up a Christian. I didn't know Jesus at all. And and when I was growing up, uh, you know, I had a great family life, but I was bullied really severely the whole way through my school life, you know, and it culminated, the worst of it probably happened when I was 11 years old. I, I know what you're thinking. How could he be bullied? He's huge. But I wasn't always six foot two and, and generously physiqued. I want to tell you, this is when I was a kid. <laughs> and I remember one day, the worst of it happened, I was 11 years old. And in my classroom one day, uh, the teacher went out of the classroom and the guy who'd been my captain, the captain of my rugby team. If you don't know what rugby is, it's the football that they play in heaven, right? And the captain of my rugby team, uh, was me, the two of us were there and these tough kids in the class started pushing us in into each other to try and make us have a fight. You know, sometimes people can be crazy. People can just be a little bit mean, right? And they're pushing us into each other to try and make us have a fight. And I thought, you know what? There's no way I'm gonna have a fight with the, the captain of my, of my rugby team. I'm just not gonna do that. Why would I do that, you know? But somehow uh, I was held, the other guys held me down. And they kind of, I was bent over like this and suddenly, this captain, the guy who was supposed to be my protector and my friend, he just begun to punch me and he began to uppercut me in the face and he just completely punched me 11 times in the face. And immediately my entire, everything was distorted. My, uh, my cheekbones were cracked. Uh, I, I was bleeding. I, I could barely see my eyes and everything puffed up. I was actually um, bruised and, and damaged so much I had to go and see a plastic surgeon, right? You know, but worse than the, 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 the physical pain, I think for me at that time was the emotional mm. pain, the feeling of betrayal, the feeling that this was supposed to be someone who was looking out for me had actually turned around and done this. And I could I couldn't believe it. You know, so when I was 15, I met Jesus. I'm not going to tell you that full story now, but when I was born again and I experienced the love and the power of God filled my heart, I, I, I responded to a, an invitation to give my life to Jesus and I felt His love fill me and it brought healing in my heart. It brought healing to that rejection. It brought healing to that pain. And when I experienced that, that day, that same day, I thought, you know what? The whole world needs to know the love of God like I've experienced tangibly right now. Well, just a couple of years ago, we were invited to go to South Africa to come and be, to, to release some revival meetings over there in South Africa. And while we were there, we had the opportunity to go and speak at a public boys school. It was one of the most prestigious um, high schools in South Africa. And a door opened where I was invited to just speak to the school for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it was such a powerful time. I knew that this was an opportunity that I could share the love of God, that I could share the good news of the gospel, that Jesus died for them and that they could have an encounter just like I did. Well, I stood up in front of those boys and there was just over a thousand boys 
in the room and the entire faculty and staff were on the stage with me on both sides and the principal of the school was sitting right next to me. And I told the story of what I've just told you right now. I shared the story about how I was 11 years old and the captain of my rugby team had beat me up and betrayed me and the very person who was supposed to be protecting me and supposed to be my friend betrayed me. But then I met Jesus and I experienced the real captain of my heart, the one who loved me, the one who died for me, the one who had a plan for my life and how he had sent me to the other side of the world to tell them all that today. And you watching my friend right now, I'm telling you this right now, God has sent me here today to tell you he loves you so much and he has a plan for your life. And so then I knew I had to give an invitation because I only had 15 minutes. And I said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, just like I did when I was 15 years old, all those years ago, God has sent this crazy Australian, half Australian, half New Zealander to the other side of the world right now to give you an opportunity to say yes to him. And I shared how this decision changed my life. And I counted to three and I said, on three, I want you to say yes. If that's you, I went one, two, three. Three And on three, over a thousand hands all went up in the air and basically an entire high school got saved. An entire high school gave their lives to Jesus. There was about eight or 10 guys in the room who didn't put their hands up, but they may very well have already been Christians. And I'll never forget the sound. I said, if you could be so bold and you're serious about this today, I want you to stand to your feet. And I will never forget the sound of a thousand boys standing to their feet and giving their lives to Jesus. But you know what? Not only was there a thousand boys standing to their feet, the principal right next to me on the stage, he was the first one to put his hand up and he stood up and gave his life to Jesus in front of the whole school as well. You know, and I came out afterwards, of course, it it makes us emotional. Jody and Keely, my daughter, were were both there. You know, we were all sitting on the stage and watched this happen as a thousand boys got born again. Their lives changed forever. But you know what I realized? The same story when I was 11 years old and I was getting beaten up in that classroom. God took what was one of the worst defeats of my life and he turned it into one of the greatest victories. What, what the enemy did when he tried to kill me, he tried to destroy me. God took that and he used it to bring a thousand teenage boys on the other side of the planet to Jesus, to Messiah. Their eternities are changed and along with it, I believe the destiny of many people in the country You know, and this is what we want to tell you today, right now, God wants to take the worst defeats of your life and he wants to turn it into the greatest victories. Romans 8, 28 says that he works all things, all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Well, wasn't it one of the most powerful things? Amen. I'm emotional now hearing it again. It was something being in the room. I'm telling you. But I know what the message is that God's saying to all of our hearts, friend. What he's saying to you right now today is that you may have paid a price for following God. Your life may have been full of hurts, disappointments, stuff, pain. Whatever's been going on in your situation, whatever your journey has looked like, God wants you to know something. What the enemy meant for harm. God is literally turning around for good. He wants you to hear that right now, that he is redeeming your stories. He is finishing the half completed stories and he's bringing redemption and he's literally bringing a Romans 8, 28 turnaround in your destiny promises in this season. And he wants you to hear this friend. I want to speak to you. I just want to speak to you from the heart of heaven for a moment. Because God's talking to you right now today. So many of us have been hurt. So many of us have walked through hard places. So many of us have walked through things that hurt our hearts. And God wants you to know you're not forgotten, that he is trustworthy, that he has not forgotten a single promise that he's spoken over your life. I can remember back in my um, early 20s when we were uh, middle 20s, when we were starting out in ministry and, you know, I'd I'd been doing a work for Jesus. And I remember I was hurt. I was offended. I'm cutting cutting it really short and I'm going to be vulnerable with you. But I was offended and I was hurt. And some stuff happened and I was like, I was mad and I wanted, 
I wanted it to be sorted out. Am I relating to anyone right now? And I was like, how can this happen, God? I'm working for you. And, and as I was leaning in for what God said, you know, I was in the bathroom one time. And those of you who've followed us long enough now, you know that the, the bathroom has become a place where God has done a lot of great things. And I was sitting there, I was sitting there, I was in there. And, <laughs> and I just heard the voice of God. And I just <laughs> probably right. shouldn't say that. <laughs> you can't. Let's okay. just say I was in the bathroom and I heard the voice of God really clearly. I heard him say Hebrews 6, 10. Now, I had no idea what that said. And so I went away. I looked it up. Let me read to you what that says. Hebrews 6, 10. You ready? God's speaking this to you, friend. God is not unjust. He will not forget the work and the love that you have shown him as you've helped these people and you continue to help him. Well, boom. In that moment, I knew God was, because he said Hebrews 6.10, and I looked it up and I knew God was saying to my heart, I am not unjust, Jody. I will never forget the work that you have shown me when you've loved my people and you continue to love them. I want to speak this same word to you. Things happen. Hurt happens. Offense happens. Don't let it be the reason that you stop serving him. Keep going, friend. Keep going, friend. God is cheering you on. And you know what he's saying? I am not unjust. God has seen everything. God knows what you've walked through. God knows what you've sacrificed. God knows the things that nobody else has seen. He has seen your sacrifices. He has seen the cost. And God is speaking to your heart today. I am not unjust. And you know, just recently, very just recently, and that has been a word that we have held on to through our ministry, because I want to be vulnerable with you, because you know what? Offense, pain and stuff is one of the biggest reasons people stop following God, stop serving God. Offense is not worthy of stopping serving God. And just recently, we were in a in a situation where a, a well-known, well-respected general of the faith, general of revival, sent me a handwritten note. And you know what was on the front of that handwritten note? Hebrews 6.10. And in that moment, once again, it was like 20 years later, I knew the Lord was actually saying the same message to my heart. Jody, I'm not unjust. I see you. I know you and you can trust me. And I'm speaking to you, friend, right now. God sees you. He knows you. He knows what you've walked through and he knows how to turn all things for good in your life. I want to speak direct from the heart of heaven to you right now. Do not quit. Keep going. God is trustworthy. He's moving on your behalf. He's turning all things around for good. And we bless you and speak his mighty redemption over your life in the name of Jesus. Just say, yes, Jesus, come and do what you want to do. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Wow. So powerful. We're going to get some Kleenex and we're going to come back right after this. Aussie revivalists Ben and Jody Hughes are fulfilling God's mandate to pour out the oil of His presence and power to the nations. The Hughes travel throughout the world, releasing and equipping men and women for revival with miracles, signs, and wonders as they break through the heavenlies with prophetic worship and ministry. Through Pour It Out Ministries, Ben and Jody provide training and equipping through their supernatural school, online mentoring, worship, missions, and meetings in crusades. Jody Hughes will personally mentor you through through a series of fully interactive live sessions in Mentor Me, an online mentoring program for women of all ages, designed to inspire and motivate you to pursue more of God. Faith in the midst of your real circumstances will be activated as you focus on God's voice speaking to you in creative, unusual, and everyday ways. Check out their social media pages as well as their website, pouritout.org, where you can find more teaching, information, and all of their resources. 
through Ben Hughes' powerful book, When God Breaks In. Ben will help you access secrets to a lifestyle of tangible encounters with God. Each chapter releases a new wave of spiritual awakening. Discover how you can keep applying fresh oil to the fire of your heart and respond to a divine invitation of signs, wonders, and miracles in How to Shift the Atmosphere for Breakthrough. This two-part audio CD teaching series will give you the keys to have a fresh encounter with God every day. Learning how to have these encounters is necessary in order to help you grow closer to God and understand and fulfill your supernatural destiny. In Ben's anointed audio CD worship soaking album, Heavenly Atmospheres, he leads you into your own encounter with God. Receive a fresh touch from the Lord as you listen, soak, and enjoy the very presence of God for yourself. Find all these products and more at pouritout.org. Welcome back, friend. We're so excited that you're here with us and we know that God's stirring your heart as He's been stirring our hearts. And I want to again reinforce to you that God is moving now in your season. He's moving now in your circumstances. In fact, I want to activate now faith in your life. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the confidence of what we hope for and an, an assurance of what we have not seen yet. It starts with two words, now faith. Now faith. Now I know I'm focusing on that one word, but I want to decree that over you right now, that what you haven't seen yet, God is still in the process of doing right now. And I activate in your heart, now faith, now faith, that God is doing a now work in your life. He's doing a now work in your heart, that God has seen every seed that you've sown. And he is the faithful farmer. He is the faithful farmer that sends rain in due season. And you're in a due season, friend, where God is pouring out the rain that's bringing every faithful seed that you have sown. He's bringing a fruit, a fruitful harvest, a bountiful harvest on the seeds that you have faithfully sown. I can hear people saying, has God seen the seeds that I sowed from 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Has God seen the journey that I've been on? Yes, friend, God is not a just. He's seen everything that you have sown in the kingdom and he's releasing a due season harvest over your faithful work for him. Amen. And I want to just decree over you a now faith a now faith, not just a faith for down the road, not just a faith for another season, not just a faith for another time. I decree over you a faith for now, that God is moving right now, that God is doing miracles now, that God is releasing salvation now, that God is releasing a harvest now, that God is releasing encounters now. I decree over you that now faith is for now. It's for now. It's not for another day. It's for now that God is going to use you now, that God's activating and redeeming your story now. Wow, Jesus, do that in our hearts. Give us a faith for now. Can you feel the sense of, of faith rising? Now, there's one other thing I want to make sure I've said to you. <laughs> I can feel it now. <laughs> <laughs> we can feel it now. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you a little secret of mine. This is one of the driving forces of my life. And this is what helps me live in the now and at equally at the same time live for the day to come. This is how I live. I understand and I am driven by the knowledge that one day, one day in eternity, I will hear the Father say, or this, this is how I live. I live to hear the Father say, well done, good and faithful servant. That motivates me, that drives me, that makes me get up in the morning, that, that's the, the driving force in my life, that I live to hear the King say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. But you want to know something else, something that even in recent times has been a driving force for me. And may this speak deep to your heart as well. I live to hear, you know, when I see Jesus' eyes, I really think sometimes, I think about the fact that when we see Jesus' eyes, I may say, you know what? I wish I gave him more. I wish I gave him more. And those things become a driving force in my life in this season. So you faithful friend who's given and given and given, who's trusted and trusted and trusted, we just speak over you that he's faithful and he's moving 
and that you would live every single day of your life to hear the Father say, well done, good and faithful servant. Wow, so powerful. You know, one of my favorite verses um, is Psalm 36, and actually it's Psalm 36, 5, yeah. right? 365, this is like a psalm for every day of your life, yeah. right? Come on. It says this, it says, Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the skies. I love that verse because it's like a childlike, you know, it's like what a kid would say. My, my dad is stronger than your dad. My, my dad's as tall as the house. It says this, your faithfulness, God's love, his faithfulness. Uh -huh. And he proves it over and yeah. over and over again. You know, I'm reminded of this time we were in India, the, the three of us, Jody, myself, our daughter Keely, and she was nine years old and we were visiting uh, Jody his parents who were missionaries there and we'd been out at dinner at this hotel and suddenly Keely just got very sick and you know uh, medical care is not readily available in India but she suddenly was in terrible pain and we basically just lay her down on a, on a couch on a lounge in the middle of the lobby of this hotel well almost immediately this man in a suit come walking up to her and he said is there something wrong can I help and we explained that she was in pain and wasn't feeling well. And he said, well, maybe I can help. I'm a doctor. Not only was he a doctor, he was a pediatrician. Not only was he a pediatrician, mm. he was the head of the pediatric hospital <laughs> just down the road. Oh my gosh, none of us could believe it. And so he he examined her and he and he just did a few things and he sent somebody off. He said, go down to the to the local pharmacy and I need you to get these particular medications for me. Someone came back very quickly. They gave her the medication and it was just such an amazing, this all yeah. happened in the space of less than half an hour. Yeah. And it was just such a great demonstration to us and also to Keely that, hey, God is yeah. so faithful. Even when you're in a place where seemingly help is not available, Available, God is faithful yeah. to us. It's so yeah. good. Yeah, you can trust Him. That's what we want you to hear today. You can trust God. You can trust God. He's faithful. He's with you. He's seen and He's moving in all of our lives and all of our circumstances. I also know that that blessing is more powerful than cursing, right? And God is a God of family. God's a God of restoring and redemption. And I know today, before we go, we want to bless you. We want to bless you. We want to bless you. Just a mother and father's blessing in your life, that you would know that you are blessed, that God's moving in your circumstances, that he's doing a Romans 8, 28 work in your life in this season right now. And we just want to release a blessing over your life and decree that this is your season. This is your season. Are you getting that? I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. This is your season, your Romans 8, 28 season. Wow. Jesus. Come on. Yeah. And so right now, before we do anything else, we're just going to speak that. Yeah. I just want to bless you in Jesus name. I speak a blessing over you. I speak that Romans 8, 28 over yeah. you, no matter what you are facing, no matter what circumstances you are facing. We've said this in another episode. You know, God is the God of the breakthrough. He is the God of the breakthrough. And it doesn't matter what situation you're in, how dire your circumstances, because I can hear some of you say, but you don't understand my situation. There's no way this can be turned around. Well, God is the God of the turnaround. He is the God who raised Lazarus from the dead. Come you on. can't get more dire circumstances than being dead, right? Lazarus was dead. And yet Jesus, this is the God of the impossible. He steps in and what the enemy intended for harm, God turns around for good. He's turning this around. And so I speak that Romans 8, 28 over you, that God works all things out for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I speak that reversal right now. Yeah, the God on. of the turnaround, the God of the breakthrough, the God of resurrection life. He is breaking through for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. Amen. And you know, the Lord's prayer, it starts with our father. What language of family? What language of, of inclusiveness? Our 
Father. I want to speak that over you right now. Our Father, friends. You know, we keep referring to you as pour it out family because it's the language of the kingdom family. And God says he's our, fa- our Father. And so we speak over you, our brothers and sisters in the kingdom, that God is moving in your life and in your circumstances. And we decree even now, even now that those half finished stories that you have shelved and thought they're never going to get to those, that God is moving in those half finished stories to rewrite with redemption over the pages, to rewrite new chapters, new beginnings, to rewrite miracle comeback stories in your journey. Amen. Do I get an amen for that? Some of you need to say, God, I welcome in the comeback stories. (laughs) Jesus, but we bless you with that. We bless you with comeback, Lazarus style, resurrection life, redemption stories. And you know, while I'm at it, I just want to bless you. I bless you with your heart thriving in this season. I bless you with your heart flourishing in this season. I bless you with completed stories, with not just half finished stories, but completed stories. And I bless you in your home with a home of peace. I bless you with connected relationship with God. I bless you with encounters from the throne room. I bless you with a heart that's on fire. I bless you with a burning passion after Jesus. I bless you with all things working together for good. I bless you with turnarounds in your circumstances. I bless you with divine healing. I bless you with divine turnarounds in your finances. I bless you with prosperity of heart, soul, mind, and finances. I bless you with family connection this and joy. I bless you with the joy of the Lord as your strength. I bless you with the ability to soar. I bless you with the ability to run. I bless you with the ability to walk every day that God prepared you for before you were even born. I bless you to be a child of the King. I bless you to be an ambassador of the living King and the Lord of Lords. I bless you to walk in life and life abundant. I bless you to be a decreer of truth. I bless I bless you to be a catalyst of hope. I bless you to be an evangelist of kingdom glory. I bless you to be a carrier of revival fire. I bless you to carry contagious hunger. I bless you that your insides would thrive. I bless you that everything your hand touches would carry the heart of heaven. And I bless you with the ability to hear the roar of heaven and the still small voice of your Father God. Wow. I bless you with grace and I bless you with mercy and I bless you to know that you are loved, cherished, chosen, anointed and appointed for this now season wow. in Jesus' name. Well, friends, we love you so much. We love you and we just would love to hear from you. I just want to encourage you, jump online, go to our website, pouritout.org. Find us on Facebook, Pour It Out Ministries. Send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to hear what God is doing. We'd love to hear about these breakthroughs that are happening. So why don't you do that? And I just finally, I mean, that was some powerful blessing from (laughs) Jody right there. And I know situations have shifted. Situations have shifted right now during this episode things are not going to be the same for you as they were before. So right now, we just pray. Yeah. We join together and see this oil up in the background, that oil of His presence. We just want to release that over yes. you today. We just ask that you be filled yes. afresh. That Psalm 23, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. And we just want to say together, God, pour 